Damon Lehrer, Rick Berry, noted painter, illustrator, and man of all trades and about town. He's been drinking, clearly. <laughs> but, but I would like to let Rick speak on topics of his choice, but led by the question, what do you think the definition of art is? Oh yeah, piss off. How's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the definition of art is something that's always being defined. Uh, okay. You know, it's, it's and really that it's the pursuit of, of new definition. Okay. To me, that is. Sure, why not? It's got to inherently have some quality of frontier, or it's not really, well, it's not the art of now. And essentially, when you look at great art from the past, it seems to hold that sense of frontier even today, though we think we're still familiar with it, and the other stuff seems to fall by the wayside. Clichéd work is, is obviously stuff that just didn't grab the brass ring. So, and it, so it looks new today. Even yeah, it's it, even today it refreshes and re-inspires. And imitators or mimics and whatnot, very mm, they don't really cut it. There's some sort of internal spark that says searching for the frontier and definition. They were content to merely mimic and imitate, and that without that discontent. It's not particularly good art. So what is it that draws you to paint, draw, and work with the figure? Well, that's a pretty easy one. Um, we're designed in a Darwinistic evolutionary sense to look for a friend or foe, nice, not nice, fight or flight, and we're tuned to really see the repository of those things that we care about the most templated in the human form. That's our psychology, our cares, our wants, our devotions are all bound up in that shape. So when you paint figuratively, you are you're assaying all of the frontier, all the psychological frontiers, all of what, what you care about, what you think could be, what could manifest in the human form. When you alter it, you're playing with huge and magnificent formulas that almost seem to bear on destiny. It's one of the livest places you can go as an artist. Yes, I, okay, I agree. I mean, you're... You know, I know you agree. I, well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, getting you, I'm, giving you a, I'm giving you a chance to plug the whole philosophy I'll here. And, plug uh, it all right. Yeah. But what about painting from life versus painting from your imagination? Because this is an uh, well, issue between us and uh, something that... You know, well, it's an issue anyway. we discuss, yeah. yeah. Um, since I, and I, I don't know if our viewers will know this, so I'll just say, since I never work with references or external references around me, when I'm painting there are no photographs, there are no models. It, this isn't to say I don't study, I do all the time, and you know that. But when I paint, I usually, there's nothing in front of me but the painting, and I often don't even know exactly what it is I'm about to do there. It just turns out to be some figure to, hopeful, sure to force. And it has been very successful for me. However, you talked me into this life drawing, life painting stuff, and I was curious. I have, since I have no formal training and I learned to live without it, I thought I could be just a prig and say I'm already doing fine without it and sort of protect my little bailiwick of having this cognitive dog trick of being able to see well by just using the surface. But that just seemed cowardly. So, yeah, I decided to opt in, see how well I would do drawing from life, and it's been a gas. And it has brought, it has brought some lovely little minor revelations that I think that if you do it often enough, those minor revelations could accrete one onto the other and produce yet bigger sort of conventional phrases inside of what I currently do. Yeah. So I enjoy it. Yeah. There's no doubt about the fact that it's fun. Right, I mean just the, the actual presence of You have to admit though, we've been incredibly lucky in the models so. though. Yeah. Well, these, if, these have been really good models. Yes, and uh, yes, if luck has to do with my skill as getting, a model, then uh, yes, it is luck. <laughs> No, I, I, I agree. It's been luck. They have, in fact, come to me most of the time. And I well, what talked me into it is because you're you, and I love your paintings. So, I mean, that that was enough to sort of sway me, that if, that if you thought it was a, a cool enough thing to do, and if you thought that I could actually do something helpful for the cause of bringing figurative work and the oeuvre as such forward, 
and, I, and part of what has been discussed between us is that the, the naysayers kind of making figurative work appear to be a, a has-been issue. And I just don't know where they get it from. I really don't. We will never not uh, want to see figures. We will never lose that incredibly bountiful circuitry in our head that lets us spot things that are figurative like. People look, children looking up at clouds and they see old men or they see winged horses. We're built to template and are wired to see in this way. And it is also the matrix where we imagine new things for ourselves and new contemplations about what we might be. It can't be passive. It's, it is a frontier that just renews itself generation after generation. So your mission to bring figurative work much more strongly to the fore had my alliance, you know, instantly. It was just that I had to draw from life trick that I was bored doing the long pose work that he said like, hours of drawing the same figure in the same pose. So it blooped out of my mouth before I realized that we could use my studio for short figure work and suddenly I had something in my studio that I had never ever seen before, which was a model and artists turned up. I have no formal training. I, this is something I should have encountered in college, but have never done. So at this late time in my life, I'm doing it now. Yeah, and, it, and 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 wonderfully so. And, I, and you know, I mean, I'm just incredibly glad to hear just that you are enjoying the process and are enjoying. Oh, it's very enjoyable. Because it, more than anything, just to see, just to be able to be uh, presented with and allowed to revel in the vision of, of the body in that way is, for me, the thing. That, you know, that's, that's enjoyable. I do have sort of a take no prisoners way of drawing. You're you're much more careful and much more sort of accurate and precise, whereas I draw with a ballpoint pen. And, and there is no taking back that scribble. It goes down, it stays down. But I, I do like that. And if that drawing doesn't work out, I flip the page and hit it again and again. So I, I tend to draw very rapid, even more rapidly than short pose work would suggest. However, that iterative application to railing out your vision over and over again, not even correcting for error, maybe even extending on interesting error, you know, possibilities in the figure, has been just a lovely enterprise. Uh, you're much more sort of in there kind of getting the essence of that particular model. But that's your beat, right. and that's well, fine. You know, just reading the recent uh, article by Adam Gopnik, he talks about the balance between those things, between forms understood and, and conceptualized previously. And, Good old Goppy, and, and, and as we things. say. Did you read it? No, you read it? Yeah. no, and I don't know Goppy. All right. He well, hates it when I call him that. Yeah, well, you know, he'll get back at you later. <laughs> I'll read it. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it, it in. But, okay. but uh, it's that whole thing. It's finding the balance between bringing previously held knowledge and, in, and, and using it in a creative way, and then taking things that are seen and and trying to be accurately a, a reporter about those things. There's some, always some, all figurative work lies on a line between those two points. Yeah, know? well, one has to be seen as part of a continuum, or, or you're just very shallow-footed in everything you do. Right, and I think it's nice and to branch out and to try to push yourself along that line a little bit to find your space, you know, to find the point at which you're Oh, even, even, filing, even finding sort of failure passages in a discipline, you, you attempt a discipline, and maybe it breaks up at some point. It doesn't carry quite through. That fail It's a little bit like science. Even failures are interesting. They, they reinform you and you kind of go, my God, what just happened there? And sometimes, if you're very lucky, it's not just a failure, but some new opportunity has arisen right in that spot. Some notion you never would have thought of applying there, but does dovetail with the figure, does extend on the vocabulary of, of, of what figurative work can mean. And that's... I mean, you have to risk. You have to risk these ways, and you have to risk across very difficult efforts. And figurative work is extremely difficult in some ways. And it never hurts to try. There are people whose egos all bust up if, if, if the figure doesn't wind up. But I'm not into a replication of what's merely in front of me, and neither are you. Um, which is interesting. We do meet up there. That's right. I mean, I think we overlap in our, yeah. in our sensibilities very much, and I'm very open to it. In fact, I've really pushed for drawing the figure from the imagination as a, a part of any kind of curriculum in the schools that I have now abandoned, in fact, for, in, in, in favor of doing this. Um, because they're not that open to that. They don't. They, they have their tried and true and sort I, I think of style. I'm, I'm worried that that's a, a Boston, New England thing, because if anyone looks around and sees what's happening in New York and L.A. and in London, 
figurative work is on fire. Yeah, right. So and you, and you have to be able to think and draw from your head and know those things cold. Essentially, you're throwing down the gauntlet before the academic and critical community of Boston. Yeah, exactly. I you mean, know, this, I, to, they don't need to, this in New York. They need it here. And and you know. If we get ourselves in hot water for this, so be it, I don't care. If you can do great figurative work, there's really nothing you can't draw or paint. And, and, and let's not confuse this with drafting, please. It is not about you know simple delineations. You can be as wild with figurative work as the most wonderful abstract artists. You, can be a, you could be a Hans Hoffman of figurative work if you really want to. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important yeah. to distinguish how far, how disparate the, the, the different ways of doing the figure are. If you look at some of the work in there that's done in atelier style mm -hmm. with very constructed uh, dot and, and angle measurements over long periods of time, that's as far away from what you do <laughs> as Hans Hoffman is away from yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, there's an enormous variety and yet they all share at least a kind of love of that one. It should be said here that I only ever draw Porky Pig and over and over again. <laughs> Mostly in the nude. <laughs> yes, we will put the lie to that by actually introducing some of your work in. It's not Porky Pig? Well, so I'm not that good. I understand, but it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Porky, I'm sure you could do Porky Pig. I, if I you will really not be showing you my mini mouse drawings. <laughs> They're too, too. Uh, yeah, we don't, we don't want to get into yeah, no. legal trouble. <laughs> All right, well, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's awesome.